Hi, I'm Tony Spacey. Welcome to Get Hooked with the GAC Derby. We're here today at Danebridge Fishery, just on the edge of the Staffordshire Moorland. What we're going to be fishing for today is browns, rainbows and its famous blues. It's a small lake, two or three acres, the stocking quality is superb and the fish fight like demons. While we're here, we're also going to be looking at the new Loop Cross S1, comparing it to the Hardy Zenith, and at the same time, we're going to be road testing two brand new lines that are not yet available, but will be by the new year from Rio. The new floating perception and the in-touch camera looks. The in-touch camera looks is going to take the part and take over from where their camera looks is now. It's got a big pair of boots to follow because the camera looks, in my opinion, is the best intermediate line currently on the market. When we got the lines on, let's go and see how we can get on. Let's catch a fish. The flies we're using today are all by Fulling Mill. Uh, Fulling Mill is a great, great success story in the British fly fishing industry. They didn't start that many years ago, but they've gone on now to be probably the biggest fly company in the, the entire world. Um, even to the degree that some of the flies that you buy with other brand names on have quite possibly been tied by Fulling Mill. They have over four and a half thousand flies in their catalogue and It'll be no surprise to hear that we at the GAC stock every single one of them on our online shop. But the main thing with them is the quality of the tying is just absolutely superb. Um, to a greater or lesser degree, for me personally nowadays, I have to say, is it worth me still tying my own flies? I still tie some, but not as many as I say did five or six years ago. The one we're using at the moment is an unweighted cat's whisker onto the Rio Camelux In Touch, which is their new line built around a braided core. The idea is that it's cut possibly 90% of the stretch that you get with a normal fly line. Um, the theory is that you feel subtle takes a little bit better. Um, and hopefully we get better hookups and more hookups because of it. It certainly casts reasonably well. Feels very different to hand, so I think it's a line that does need a certain amount of getting used to. As you can see, we picked another breezy day, so it's quite important to double haul. Helps increase the line speed, gets the line out regardless of the wind, gives you a nice turnover. Again, we're using the, re the new Rio Camelux in touch line. Now, according to Rio, because this particular line has such a low stretch, any subtle takes and nuances we feel in fish touching, it should help us achieve some hookups. So we'll see what we can do. Now I'm just starting off here with a steady six to 10 inch retrieve. One of the nice things about this new Rio line, it does have a retrieve marker. So you know when the white marker comes out of the water, you've got approximately 12 feet of line left in the water. Now the important thing about that is twofold. If you retrieve it all the way up to the white marker, it's fairly safe to go straight into an overhead cast. But you must remember that this is a sinking line. The problem with all sinking lines if there's a reasonable proportion of the line in the water and you go straight into an overhead cast, it's more than possible to actually overload the rod 
and cause a lot of damage to it. If that's the case, then it is absolutely imperative, and I'll just demonstrate it, to do a roll cast first. You do need the line up and clear of the water before it's safe to go straight into a standard overhead with a bit of a double haul. Although that wasn't one of my best. But hopefully, let's see what we can tempt. Now one comment that I would make straight away about this uh, new Rio camera looks, it does appear to be quite a lot brighter than the camera looks that it's taking over. However, obviously not bright enough to scare the fish because we have fish on. And it looks like quite a nice rainbow. It's not one of the Danebridge monsters, but it's a nice fish all the same. I wonder what it looks like underwater. Let's turn to the fish cam and see, shall we? And I just love these traditional style wooden landing nets. It's kind of really nice to have the state-of-the-art technology in the rod and line, but still to have something of the older and tr more traditional feel. And there we are. Nope, not quite ready yet. Come on. Oh, we'll get your head up. Let's get What a fantastic fish. It's fish like this that's a real credit to to Lawn and to Danebridge as well. Absolute great condition. Fight like the very devil all the way into the net. And into the net he comes. Absolute beautiful, beautiful, bright rainbow here. Because we're fishing catch and release, absolutely imperative. Use a barbless hook. I don't like keeping fish out of the water if you have to take them out any longer than 100% necessary. So let's get him back in the water. And there we go, absolutely gorgeous. The beauty of this kind of net is as well, it's designed for catch and release, extremely soft rubber, so we don't cause any damage to the fish scales, and it doesn't remove any more than the slime that is absolutely necessary. Gorgeous looking net, a pleasure to use. Let's see if we can catch another. Now the two rods we're trialling today, the Hardy Zenith and the Loop Cross S1, Hardys call it the Cintrix, but actually it's a 3M compound called Powerlux, so they're both made out of the same kind of material. They're very, very light, very strong. In my opinion, these two rods are out on a league of their own. Um, the Zenith, which is the one we're using here at the moment, we've just had a follow all the way back in. 
lifted off a second too soon. It's what happens when you talk to the camera and not concentrating on your fishing. Um, the Zenith is a fantastic rod. Up until I tried the Luke Cross, I would have said it was the best rod in the world. It's a really, really, really nice rod. Oh, this is something a bit better. It's a really, really nice rod. Fantastic bend. It goes on forever. You can feel every nuance of the cast. You really can't fault it. The Luke Cross S1, again, they're the kind of rods that every time I use one of them, the one I use last is the one that I seem to prefer. However, the last couple of weeks, I've been using the Cross S1, and I have to say, for my money, the Cross has just that something extra. It's got a really quirky attitude in that it's a superb rod for casting, but when you get a fish on, then it comes into something even different. You'll see that in a short while when we swap rods. At this moment in time, we've got something which has just taken all the slack out of the line and it's taken some more line as well. So now we can play this fish on, on the reel. As you can see, yet again, another superb fish. Absolute fighting like a demon. And some people knock stop trout. They should really come and cast a line in a place like this. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget, join us next time for more tips, hints, and more good fun fishing like the YouTube channel, subscribe to it, that way you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, tight lines.